Hi, everybody. This is Scott McLeod. Welcome to another episode of the Coronavirus Chronicles. I am absolutely delighted to have my good friend Sylvia Mazzoni here with me. Sylvia lives near the municipality of Perugia in Italy, and um, she's the functional equivalent of a school principal. Uh, she's in charge of eight buildings and has over a thousand students that she's in charge of uh, in the region. So Sylvia, thanks for being with us today. Let's just dive right in. Why don't you tell us a little bit, you're about four weeks into schools being closed there. How are you handling instruction? How are you helping your students and families? What are you doing? Okay, hi Scott, nice to be with you tonight. And um, in fact, uh, we are still struggling with the equity issue. So we are still dealing with families not able to connect mm -hmm. and not in possess of the proper devices. So we are still um, distributing the devices belonging to the school to the families that are not able to, to buy a device or maybe they have more children that have to attend school through a device mm -hmm. and so we are trying to support them to check if everyone is in and to find a solution where when the, this is not the case so that is how we are dealing with uh, our mission that is to have everyone involved. So for the students who don't have a device, are you providing paper copies of lessons? Are you somehow, are they picking up instruction? Have they just been off of school for four weeks? No, um, we have a couple of situations in which the only way and the most suitable ways was to send photocopies, that's true, but most of the families we made it to let him, them have a device, a device by bought by the school or already belonging to the school, uh, either a tablet or um, a laptop. Okay. So we, in fact, we had many, so we were able to reach many, many families this way. Okay, great. So then what does remote learning look like through the devices then for your families right now? That is pretty weird mm, and everyone is missing the relationship mm -hmm. and uh, interacting by through the internet is not uh, it, it's not easy for everyone so many students are still struggling with technical problems mm -hmm. and we try to support them at distance and uh, mm, Many kids are um, working pretty well, in fact, but here you find the um, differences between families. Some of the kids, they have parents being home mm -hmm. and helping a lot. Some others, maybe the parents are still working, they work in hospitals, or so they are very, very busy now, mm -hmm. and they, they don't they don't manage to support children. So it's up to the kid to participate, to take part and to deal also with technical problems. So that makes a big difference. So a big difference between the level of engagement you can have from different kids. That's a pity because sometimes, because you know, you want every one of them to be involved at the same level, right? So, hopefully, right. So, Sylvia, your the ages of your children in your schools are from very young all the way up through mm -hmm. thirteen. Thirteen. Okay. Thirteen. Mm -hmm. All right. So, what does um, what does learning look like right now for a primary student, for example? So, um, it it there are many differences according to ages. Mm -hmm. So we decided to um, to make something different from for pre-primary students. So they have a dedicated uh, uh, area in our website where teachers they upload contents 
videos and many interesting things. So it's up to the parents to connect and to uh, download and uh, interact with through the website. Okay. But for primary students, we have um, our area in the internet where they can uh, download and upload and interact through um, like messages mm -hmm. with teachers and sometimes they can also interact in a synchronous time because that is a very challenging for us because of the digital divide we uh, are facing so video teaching somehow it's very hard because not everyone can connect at the same time and not for a long time so we save this to maintain the relationship so maybe they gather they are there at the same time to say hello mm -hmm. how do you do um, just chatting maybe sure. and they do the job uh, through the um, through the internet platform we use to interact okay great and then for like a early high school you know 10 to 12 13 yes that is uh, our lower secondary school so we call it like this and uh, they interact by subject okay so every teacher, every subject teacher upload new content every week in a, a, in a ratio that somehow can reflect the number of hours per week they were having at school. Mm -hmm. So some, somehow there is a balance between the different subjects. And so they find they find them um, a standard not to be uh, too stressing and challenging for the students because now the most important thing is to make them be engaged right. and involved in something normal right. because ev everything around them is not normal so it's not a matter of lot of content and uh, demanding uh, tasks mm -hmm. but interesting engaging tasks to let them be concentrated in something else then it's that is not the virus the future the um, the danger and all the rest mm -hmm. so we are flying low mm, we are, we are t trying to keep it easy for them fair enough so sylvia do you have a national curriculum or national tests that you have to pay attention to uh, we have but they are gone for this year so they decided uh, that we will skip them and uh, in fact in this time of the year we will, uh, will be usually we would have been testing the students just now okay. and close to the end of the year so uh, late april and early may it was time to to test but they are gone so no testing uh, no national tests for them for anyone this year and same for the final examination of students um high school students and same for our our um, 13 years old students that are the is the last year for us usually it ends with a, a final exam so that that will not take place pretty sure we are waiting for a uh, formal uh, communication about it but we already know that we simply we will decide the level of uh, accomplishment or the level of learning they have and that's it gotcha so Sylvia, you are several weeks ahead of most schools in the United States in terms of being closed and doing remote learning. Mm -hmm. uh, as you think back on the last month or so, uh, what seems to have worked very well for you right now? And what seem to have been, what are some of the challenges maybe at this time? 
So for us, um, the challenge is because we have very young students. So the challenge is to make them feel um, being part of something because you can give some content and learning somehow, but what they miss most, they, told, they, they are telling us, they miss the presence, they miss the teachers, they miss their um, friends and being together. And that is one chal big challenge, because that, that is something that you can not easily replace through the internet. Right. And uh, that is the most challenging thing. Mm -hmm. All the rest, you, you can mm, make some content work, new um, areas of subjects. They, it, it is seem relatively easy to transmit somehow. So content, it's okay. But relations and engagement, it's, it's not. Mm. Right. And and as in the first weeks, it's, it it seems it was enough, but now the longer you go, the more they miss to be there together. Mm. Okay, so something for us to attend to as as our weeks uh, get longer and longer here. Mm. Thank you, um, Sylvia. So one of the things that I've noticed with schools here is that uh, many of our schools often have to feed our students. Um, because otherwise they may not get breakfast or lunch at home. Is that something that is an issue there for you? I have to say that um, only some stream of our students, they are heat eating at school. That is not the standard in Italy. So most of our students, they are not eating in a school anyway. So, but some of them, yes. And uh, I know that for a few of them, that is also an issue. But um, I would say that that is a um, very tiny part and there are um, social services taking care of that. Most um, difficult thing for our students is the, the digital divide that, um, that we already discussed. So, um, it is not 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 really a matter of eating at school because that is not a standard in by us. Okay, good, thanks. Um, so we're kind of at near the end of our time here. Is there anything else that you want to share? Something that people should be thinking about as they move these hmm. directions of remote learning? Uh, I would say that um, we are also struggling with finding a creative way to interact with the children through the internet. Mm -hmm. Because we were really working hard to switch from very frontal, uh, traditional teaching to something that was more interactive, more participative, more um, engaging the students, cooperative groups and, you know, to promote autonomy in our students. So this way, teaching through the internet could be very, very old way. Mm -hmm. The teacher speaks, they must listen, they have to mute the microphones. So that is something that taking us very uh, back in, in our history. So to a very standard traditional way of teaching. And that is something we, we are um, afraid of because we were really working hard to avoid this or to reduce this to a very tiny bit. So now it's pretty challenging to find a way to make them uh, be active while you are teaching this way. So. I have no solution, but I have to say this is one point to stress because it's it's a second to go back very mm -hmm. very um, much to um, really uh, way of teaching that we were 
were seen was not effective anymore, not with students of 2020. That is something very hard because this modern uh, and wonderful um, devices we have and the internet, thanks God we have it, them, <laughs> but, but they are not so easy promoting uh, a very participative and engaging way of teaching. Right. Not much. Yes, and I think American schools are struggling with that too, and I appreciate that you're sharing that that's also a concern there in Italy. Um, okay. Sylvia, we're at the end of our time together. I'm so appreciative of your willingness to share the Italian context and glad that you and your family are doing well and are safe and healthy. And um, we will sign off on this episode of the Coronavirus Chronicles. Sylvia Mazzoni, she's an amazing tech-savvy school leader in the Perugia area of Italy. Uh, track her down and get in touch with her. She's pretty awesome. Thanks, Sylvia. <laughs> Thank you. Bye-bye.